Tom, once I had a million dollars seized by the Argentine government, here's how it happened. I had a million dollars in a bank in Argentina, in dollars, and it was a U.S. bank. Um, on, uh, on one day, they simply passed a law converting it all to pesos, and they, and they converted everybody's, everybody's account to pesos in the country. And the next day, they devalued the peso 10 to 1. And 24 hours after they'd, you know, done that, I had 100,000, whereas I had a million before. Ooh. And they did it, I mean, they did it quickly and easily to everybody in the country. Now, in theory, you know, that if, if it had been property, they would have had to pass a law seizing 90% of the property of everybody in the country. That would not be so popular, right, to seize the property. And if they wanted to seize 90% of the property of everything in the country, they would have had to subpoena a court in New York or Delaware <clears throat> and get my appearance, right? And there would have been three, four, five years of lawsuits going on. And if you really wanted to take something, you have to kidnap everybody and take them to jail and sweat their private keys out of them. And that's not very practical, right? So at the end of the day, it's not likely that... Uh, that the governments of all the world will just confiscate 90% of your uh, of your crypto assets or your bitcoin but in fact it's a foregone conclusion that they're definitely going to compensate 90% of your currency right it's happening at 1% a month or 2% a month right now so all you got to do is wait between 5 and 10 years and you're going to lose 90% of your purchase, uh, of your money if it's in if it's in a currency or a currency derivative, and they don't even have to pass a law.